So here's a new version of the Blink program. And in this one, you can see that all I've done is add some comments here. At the start, a large block of comments and a few comments on each line of code explaining what's going on. It's very important to comment your code so that if someone else needs to look at it, they can understand what you are trying to do. It also means that if you leave your code for a long time and then come back to it, you can remember what it was that you were trying to do. This example of Blink is actually the official example from the examples section you can see here. Now, programs that turn outputs on and off are all very well, but computer systems aren't very useful if they don't have inputs. Think about your PC. If there was no mouse or keyboard or touchscreen, it wouldn't be the most useful piece of equipment if it only ran the same code over and over again, regardless of what was happening around it. So in our Arduino programs, we need to learn how to control code based on inputs as well. And the first type of input that we're going to look at is the simple button input, which is a digital input. You'll have noticed on the tutorial shield, there are two buttons connected to pins A4 and A5. We're going to start by using the one connected to pin A4. Now, just as we had to tell the Arduino when a pin was going to be an output, it's good practice to also tell it when we're going to use a pin as an input. So right underneath our pin mode one output, we're going to add an, a second pin mode command, making pin A4 an input. Don't forget the capital letters, and it'll change color when you get it right. Now, the command from reading a digital input is digital read. You tell it which input you want to read from, and this function will return either true or false to let you know if the button is or isn't currently being pressed. Now, in order to make use of this information, we're going to need to make a decision based on whether or not the button is being pressed. And we're gonna do that using a command called if. If I now say if digital read A4, that says if I am pressing the button at this particular moment in time. The interesting thing about the if command is if we then open some squiggly brackets around it and put some closed squiggly brackets at the end here, this becomes a set of code that will only take place if this statement is true. So what I've done here is I've changed my loop so that now if I am pressing the button at this particular moment in time, it will flash LED1 on and off once and then go back around the loop. And if I am still pressing the button, it will flash LED1 on and off again. If I am not pressing the button when I go around the loop, it will ignore everything up to this closed squiggly bracket. So it will ignore all of that code and simply move on to the next line here, which actually means going back around the loop and checking for a button press again. So what this program will now do is it will go round and round the loop, checking, am I pressing the button? Am I pressing the button? Am I pressing the button? And then if it, when it comes back round here, if I am pressing the button at that point in time, it will flash the LED on and off once, go round again, check if I'm still pressing the button, flash it on and off again, and then go round the loop over and over again, and so on. It's time to upload this program and have an experiment with it so that you can really understand what this if statement is doing. Once you think you've got to grips with it, we'll move on to the next tutorial.